Okay, so in this video we're going to learn how to use the truth tables a little bit more. We're going to learn how to use them to uh, calculate the truth value of a compound statement. So in short, truth tables help us determine the value of a compound statement by determining the truth of all possible combinations of the parts of the uh, compound statement. So with that in mind, let's look at the first thing you should remember when you're doing this. If you have in your statement, like not P, just one letter, then you're going to have two rows. And you just want to memorize that. The reason you're going to have two rows is because that one letter could be true or it could be false. Those are the two possible truth values, so you have two rows. Now if you have two letters, like P or Q over here, P and Q, you're going to have four rows because there's four possible combinations of P or Q, right? Um, it's like flipping a coin. You could have heads, 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 tails, or tails, heads, or tails, tails. So we capture all four of the four rows. If you have three letters, like if we have P or Q, and, and then we had um, and R, in parentheses around the P or Q, then you would have eight rows. So in your book, they give you this little formula, L equals 2 raised to the power uh, of N, and N is the number of letters. You don't have to know that, right? It's just saying if you have two letters, then you have four rows. If you have one letter, you have two rows, right? Three letters, eight rows, and it keeps doubling. Okay, so before I sh uh, give you some examples, just review the steps real quick. Let's review them. You write out your compound statement. On the left, you add extra columns for each letter. The next step is to draw the number of rows based on the number of letters, like we just saw on the last screen. Then the next step is to list all possible truth combinations of letters. And there's a mechanical way to do this. You start from the right letter, and you alternate true and false. And then you go to the letter to the left, and you put double trues and double falses. And if there's a third letter, you go to that third letter on the next left there, and four trues and four falses, right? If there's still another letter, you would do eight trues and eight falses and so on. It keeps doubling. And then you just plug in um, the truth values of the parts on each row to calculate the possible truth values of the whole on each row. And that's it. It's pretty simple. So let's uh, practice. Uh, it's Well, it might not sound so simple yet, but <laughs> as we practice, I think it will be. Okay, so here is a problem. We had the compound statement if s then r and s and not r. So the first thing I did is I wrote the statement, and then on the left I put s and r. Okay. Now, the next statement is I drew the rows. And since there's two letters, S and R, there's going to be four rows. Okay. So now, what I'm going to do, and uh, yeah, this leads back. The next step is where you alternate the trues and falses on the row, the letter, far furthest to the left. So we have true and false. Oh, there we go. I'm using paint, so I'm a little bit slow. <laughs> okay. um, true and false. So we alternate. And then, on the letter on the, to the left of that, you always do double trues, no matter how many rows you have. Double trues. And I just recommend memorizing this pattern, you know, true, false, true, false. And then the next letter will be true, true, false, false. And what it does is it just gives you a way to capture all truth, possible truth combinations without having to think about them. Okay. Okay, so now we just calculate each row of the truth table. Okay, so we have if s then r. So that's if true then true. If you wanted to write the two down, you could put true and true. But if true then true. Remember your horseshoe. You have to go back, make sure you know those. The horseshoe is only false when you have um, s is true and r is false. So if true then false, it would be false here, right? If false, then true. That's true for the horseshoe. Go back and review your table, if you um, the horseshoe table, truth table, if you forgot all this. Okay? And then we have true. So we've calculated the horseshoe inside the parentheses. And is our main operator. Let's go over here. We have s's. Now, if you want, you could always write in uh, the s. Just transfer it from the left to the right, if it makes it easier for you. Let's, let's do that just to illustrate, not skip too many steps early on. Okay, so then we have false and false. Okay, and then you have not r, so it's just going to be the opposite of r, right? False, true, false, true. You could write in r, then not r, but I'm just going to write in, you know, uh, false, true. I'm going to reverse the r, right? Um, and then, oh, my rows are really messy, huh? 
<laughs> okay, um, false true. Okay, so now we can calculate the little and here. And uh, if we have true and false, uh, the only time the and is true is if both conjuncts are true. So there we have true. And the rest would be false. True and false is false. False and false, of course, is false. Go back and review the last video if you're lost right now. Okay. Now, so I've mechanically plugged in the truth values um, based on the possible truth values of S and R. And now all I need to do is my main operator. So I have true and false. Okay, that's false, right? And then we have false and true. That's false. So I'll write in false. And then we have true and false, which is false, right? Okay. And then true and false, which again is going to be uh, false. So this one's interesting. We've calculated the main operator right here of this statement. There are four possible truth combinations. And for every one, when you plug it in, this statement is false. And you might say, oh, that's interesting, or you might not, I don't know. But when we have a statement that's always false, we call that a contradictory, a self-contradictory. It's like saying all bachelors are married, which is going to be uh, false, right, all the time. So um, there you have it. <laughs> okay, We've uh, figured out that this is a self-contradictory statement by figuring out all possible truth values. Right? Okay, so let's go to number too, and get some more practice with this. Okay, I ran out of room over here. So again, we have two letters. I, I've written the statement. I've written the letters on the left. We have two letters, so we're going to have four rows. Okay, And the first thing you want to do is the letter on the far right. You go true, false, and you alternate. Right? It does, never changes. True, false, true, false. Okay, And then you have double trues and double falses for the next letter. Right? So true, true. Um, false, false. And then, it's real easy and mechanical if you know your uh, little truth tables for the horseshoes and stuff. It's real mechanical. You just plug in the truth values for each row. right? And uh, we could do this a little if then if you want first. Um, if C then D. So if true then true. That would be true. If uh, uh, C and remember, always start within the parentheses and work out. That's that's a good uh, way. And some of you might see shortcuts. I'm not going to go through them or all of them, but uh, if you see them, that's great. You're probably right. There are some shortcuts. Okay, so we have false. And then remember, a false antecedent is always true. So we got the little horseshoe. And then C, then we have and not C. So we're just going to have a reversal of C for the not. And we have false... Um, false, we're just reversing C, and true, and true. Okay, so now we're set to figure out this little and dot, and we have true and false, which is false, okay. and we have false and false, which is false, and is only true when both are true, like right here, and then true and true is true. Okay, now so we have the and, that's good. That's what's inside the parentheses. So false, false, true, true. And then we have not D, and you just reverse the values of D over on the left. So we have false, and then um, true, and then false, and true. OK. Then we figure out the horseshoe. So we have if false, then false, if false, then true, if true, then false, if true, then true. So Remember, the antecedent is false. The horseshoe will always be true. But then we have true antecedent false consequent, so that's false. And then true true is true. So there you have it, the main operator. Notice they're not all true. They're not all false. Rather, they're both true and false. So this is what we call a contingent statement. There's at least one true and at least one false. This is a contingent statement. Like the cat is on the mat would be contingent because sometimes it might be true and sometimes false. All right, let's do a third one. Again, we have uh, 
it's nice to use two letters. So again, I set up the statement, I set up the letters, and I'm going to alternate with the letter on the far right. It doesn't matter if you put P or M on the far right, by the way. You could reverse the order and just plug this in, because all you're doing is figuring out possible truth combinations. And then we double them. True. True. False. False. OK, so we have an OR statement as the main operator. So if we can figure out that um, either side is true, then the whole thing's true. So if M, then P is, is true, right? We can plug that in, because we have if true, then true. If true, then false is false. Um, if false and true is true. If false and false is true. OK, notice we're dealing with OR. So we know that this OR statement, I don't even have to do blah, blah, blah over here. This OR is going to be true because the first disjunct is true. This one I'm not sure yet. This OR will be true. And this OR will be true because it's one of the disjuncts is true. So this is a shortcut that I'm showing you. So now we have if P then M. So that's if false then true. So you could write false, true. So if false then true is true, right? Then we have the or, if false or true. So we have true. So number three is always true. And that's what we call a tautology. Right? It would be like a square has four sides. It's a tautology. And this statement is always true. It, again, it's called a tautology. Cool. So there you have it. Pretty simple. Um, once you get the hang of it, very mechanical. Let's do a hard, uh, well, some people think it's hard. It's just a lot more work. And we have uh, three letters. So when you have three letters, you're going to have eight rows. Just mem memorize it, right? One letter is two rows. Two letters is four rows. Three letters is eight rows. And we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. We're going to alternate trues or falses all the way down. And this is going to take me some time because, again, I'm using paint. I don't know how to use anything else because I'm technologically ignorant. <laughs> OK. Um, OK. So. There you have the alternating trues or falses. And then just like before, you want to put double trues and double falses all right, for the next one. Now, some people will do it a little differently, but this is just one nice way of um, getting um, all possible truth combinations without having to think. All right? And then, so you went true false true false right alternating then double trues and double falses alternating and now you, so you go one and then two and then four you keep doubling it so if we have four letters we would have uh, eight but we have we went from one two and now we have four trues right and four falses okay um, so there's that, four falses. OK. And uh, whoop, there we go. And then you just plug them in like you did before. OK, it's very simple. So if H and then N is true. Um, if H and then N is true here, because it's true, true. And then we have false. All right, and then we have false. And then we have uh, true, because it says if false, then true. And then if false, so the antecedent's always false and down here. So these are all going to be true. Pretty simple. And then we have if t then n. So that's if t then n. So you're doing them backwards. You could write down the t's and n truth values underneath, but it's true and true. So we have true, false and true is true. Then we have false. All right. If T, then N, right? So if false, then false, we have true. And you just keep going like this. Um, true, true. If true, then false is false. T, then N. And then if false, then false is true. So now we're in a condition, a position to figure out the antecedent of the whole uh, conditional here. So we have true and true is true. Oh, there we go. True and true is true. False and false is false. True and false is uh, false. We have true, true, false, 
Oh, that's an ugly false. And then true. There you go. That's uh, 